and welcome to another exciting episode of Sharpie Puss Productions. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just gone midnight here in Polandia, and uh, we're in Ardenweald with these little weird fairy things selling food and drink and these kind of kind of like drainy night elf people um, also I've set up this thing to remind me to play my uh, musical instruments because I didn't realise but I had these two items in my bag and when you play them you get a nice buff so this one um, you are inspired by the music of Bastion healing you periodically and improving your mood so apparently it heals me um, although I'm confused because it only works in Bastion but um, yeah I'm just I don't know I just put it on everywhere so I need to change that so it only appears in Bastion because I'm pretty sure it doesn't work here but um, anyway so uh, yeah, I've I've done a bit of leveling since yesterday during the day, and um, okay, um, and yeah, I've just just thought I'd pop on and do a little bit more leveling maybe for an hour, and then I'll hit the hay. Um, but yeah, I was um, having a word with a few friends today. Um, and I might do a video on it or something maybe, it's uh, like a sort of side project. Um, I've wanted to make a new video for a long time, I've been trying to figure out what kind of video I'd want to make. And um, I thought one about maybe going into games blind sort of thing, like you know, because um, in this day and age I don't know about everyone but myself. I'm absolutely terrible for like researching games before I play them, um, either by reviews or previews or you know uh, influencer videos on YouTube, all this sort of stuff. And um, sometimes by doing that, it affects how I feel about the game before I've even played it. And if it's a bad review, for example, or something like that, I might just not play the game at all. Or I might go in with a negative attitude and that will, in result, make me feel like, you know, this is a bad game and I'm wrong for liking it, sort of thing. And this is something that I've completely avoided and am still avoiding with uh, Shadowlands. Gosh, that's a bit loud, one sec. That's going to get annoying if I keep talking. Um, let me just turn down the dialogue a bit. Um, so yeah, so basically um, that's kind of what the video will be about, is just going into games and maybe even like expand it to movies as well. Just don't look at any sort of reviews or previews well previews okay like because obviously you need a preview to figure out like you know is this a game that i might be interested in but you know like for wow for example like you know you can spoil so much of the game so easily by just going on wowhead or mmo champion or something like that or even just watching other streamers play because like if you look at the if you look at Twitch at the moment in World of Warcraft, you've got like, you know, Asmongold with his a million viewers, like, kind of thing. And uh, he's max level and probably gearing out, doing dungeons and everything like that. Um, and, you know, if, if I watched that, um, I'd, I'd enjoy it for sure. I, I love watching Asmongold content. I think it's, uh, he's uh, quite amusing to watch. Like, um, but... At the same time, I'd be watching content that I haven't yet discovered, and that would take the fun out of it, like the excitement of discovery and everything, you know. Um, and that's why, like, I've just been avoiding everything. I've gone into this expansion literally knowing next to nothing. Um, 
you know, I didn't play BFA that much. I just, I, w I wasn't interested in that expansion after the, um, after my initial, like, playthrough getting to max level. I just, I didn't enjoy the zones, the dungeons. Nothing appealed to me in that e expansion whatsoever. It was, um, I really like the idea of the Alliance versus Horde. That's what sold it to me, like uh, the Warfronts and stuff. Like they said it was going to be like Warcraft 3. It was red versus blue again. It was going to be amazing. And I just felt it was like a jungle expansion with a lot of trolls. And, um, you know, the, the Alliance versus Horde thing was there, but it felt, I don't know, disconnected from everything. It just, it felt like a, you know, when you're watching like um like uh, this is going to sound weebish but watching an anime and it is weebish um and then you have the main arc the main story and then once that arc is over you have a metric shit ton of fluff of these like side stories like this filler and it's just usually in my opinion, it's so crap and boring, and you just, you know, there's there's exceptions every now and then. Filler can be good, but the majority of the time, filler is literally what it says on the tin. It's filler. It's there to waste a bit of time to fill the gaps, and um, yeah, it's uh, that's how I felt BFA was. It felt like a filler expansion, an experimental expansion as well. They, they were trying a lot of new things, and um, yeah, it was just, um, it just wasn't for me, you know. Um, but anyway, going into Shadowlands, um, I've done the, the, the thing of literally um, jump back into BFA at the end of it, saw what happened with the cinematics i went through all of them and then after that once i saw the final cinematic of uh sylvanas opening the the sky pretty much and uh you know shadowlands sort of being announced and whatnot um i didn't look at anything like anything else like no no like preview videos like the first time I saw this video of Anduin getting scraped up into the sky um, in the pre-patch I discovered that in the pre-patch but I fully knew that that video was out prior to the pre-patch sort of thing so um, yeah it's I've gone in blind so to say and honestly it's been so refreshing not knowing anything not expecting anything like literally i have absolutely no idea where this story is going it it feels like i know that i've got to choose a covenant i know that but as in like the systems that this expansion has in it i've got no idea is it going to be the same as bfa maybe am i going to dislike it because of that maybe but at the moment like the leveling experience is satisfying and I'm enjoying it a lot. Like at the moment, I'm not really paying attention. I'm mostly focusing on what I'm saying, hence why I'm just tagging random mobs and stuff. But um, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know. Like I, I like these new abilities, like this thing. Like my Moon King goes absolutely mental just pumping out a billion spells and stuff. You know, I can only use it once every two minutes, but Christ, what a cool ability. Um, and you know i know i've got to choose a covenant and uh i've been through two of them i've been through bastion and maldraxxus and now i'm going through arden Wield, and then i've got one more which is like those um what do you call them uh like vampire people and um i know from the cinematics uh i did watch those cinematics like introducing each one sort of thing um uh, I know Garrosh is involved in this uh, sort of vampire one, but um, apart from those cinematics, like I know literally nothing, nothing else. And for example, um, spoiler alert! Like obviously, if you're watching this, you probably you know watch my previous videos or something. But um, 
uh, in the last zone in Maldraxxus, you come across Lady Vash, and for me, that was so cool. Like, um, probably everyone knew that she was involved there, and Draca as well. Like, you know, you see these characters who are just like, gosh, I know these, you know. Vash, for example, for me, it was like one of my favourite bosses in TBC. Like, I used to love that encounter because um, it was when I was um, shortly before I joined, um, uh, got my job at Blizzard. I was raiding, and when I got the job, we would like uh, when I sorry when I got the um, the opportunity for the job, the interview when they offered me, hey, do you want to come to Ireland and have the interview? I was raiding SSC and I just remember we were coming up to Vash and I was so excited and I was like gosh yes like I might be able to work for Blizzard like this is going to be amazing and uh, I always associate Blizzard with Vash because it's just like uh, and that, sorry Vash with Blizzard because it's it's like my my last memory of you know before I joined Blizzard kind of thing and uh, the same with the champion of Nauru title it's like my favorite title because it's linked to you know I actually got that um, while I was in the hotel room <laughs> in Ireland um, shortly after I first went over and started like when I had my job at Blizzard on my I think first day of working at Blizzard I remember I was you know so hyped to be there and I just uh I, but I was also hyped to get home and go to the hotel because I knew that you know all I have to do now I've done the whole quest chain I just need to go and kill Mac Theridon or something or I can't remember what it was it's a long time ago but um yeah I got that uh title and um yeah it was uh you know it was exciting and when I saw Vash in that zone I was like oh my god this is so cool and I've almost been adamant that I'm going to join the Night Fae. Like this, this zone and these people, I just, I like the idea of it. I like the zone, I like the music, um, I like the ability, that's cool as well. Um, I don't know. I just really like this like aesthetic kind of thing. I don't know what, if they're good, I don't, I haven't researched into anything like that, you know? I'm just, I'm going off looks alone kind of thing. Um, but when I saw Vash, I was like, gosh, like, you know, if I join Maldraxxus and those guys, I'm going to have Vash on my side and she's going to be like my, my, my wafu kind of thing. So that would be pretty badass. But um, oh, I don't know, it's going to be tough when I reach max level kind of thing. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. You know, still, still time to decide. Got a few, uh, almost level 59 actually. Christ, I'm flying through it. It's going fast. I, I would have been happy with another 10 or 5 levels I think like this is going really fast for me like this leveling experience um, very smooth like the the first zone was a bit slow with um, Bastion like the there was a lot of text uh, speech that you couldn't skip and for the first zone you know it's it's fine but I kind of I was getting a bit impatient I just wanted to get in and kill a few things and whatnot but um, yeah, since then it's calmed down a bit. There's not as much stuff going on. Um, what have we got to do with this? That guy's elite. Um, that's fine. I love this ability though. Look. Just spamming abilities. Like crazy. So awesome. Can't wait to use that in a dungeon or a raid or something. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah. We'll probably. Probably still choose night photo I think as the covenant unless the vampires have something up their sleeve to prove to me um, but yeah um, but yeah like I don't know going back to the going in blind to the expansion you know like the video I want to make is sort of mostly about that like you know a lot of people are going into games nowadays already knowing so much about the game or maybe like reading loads of feedback and reviews like on IGN or Metacritic or Facebook anything like that and you know there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of the time you can you can skip games that you may not be interested in or you might have wasted money on or something like that but I'm thinking back to like when I was younger before 
you had YouTube, before you had these influencers, and before I discovered these sites like IGN and Kotaku and all this sort of stuff, like, um, all, all I used to rely on was one magazine that came out once a month on the first Saturday in my local Tesco and uh, I used to go shopping with my parents or I used to tell them PC Gamer you need to get a PC Gamer magazine if it's the new one I've got and I used to show them I used to be like mum look I've got this one or dad I think my dad used to get it I can't remember but I was like look I've got this one don't get this one with this guy on the front get get the one with the orc on the front or something you know and um yeah it was it was it was fun and that was the only kind of um way i had of looking into upcoming games you know you had a demo disc on it you were lucky if there was a game on there that you'd be interested in kind of thing like a lot of the time it i i never found that many games that i was super interested in on demo discs but you know some some i did like I remember I had a PC gamer with um, Final Fantasy VII on. It was it was a really strange time in the um, in the actual story of Final Fantasy. It wasn't at the beginning or anything. It was like midway through. So um, it was like on disc two, the very start of disc two, where I think you meet Aerith or something. I can't remember. It's so long ago. But anyway, so you didn't know who the characters were. The, all the demo disc gave you was a little glimpse at the gameplay what you can expect and you know the story was there but you know if you imagine a final fantasy game you're not going to know jack what's going on like in a final fantasy game if you jump through midway through you're you're lost so you know that it's there just to show you a glimpse of it that's all you got and uh the same for the game showcased in the actual magazine itself you know you'd have like a game in there and you'd maybe have a few pictures of it I was mostly interested in the pictures and the graphics and stuff but then you know if you were really interested in what it looks like then you'd read about it as well and um, a lot of the time I mean from the articles I read in like PC Gamer back then they didn't get this like major exclusive access they got limited very limited access it seems like compared to nowadays and you know they maybe had like their own like first opinion but they were like you know I've a lot of the time they'd be like you know I've got no idea what this game's going to be like they they give their opinion but you had to make that choice yourself kind of thing and um yeah I uh I think I miss those those days of going into games like not doing all this research beforehand not looking at the data mines and the the spoilers the leaks and everything um i just want to go into games knowing nothing and experiencing things for the first time like discovering systems and secrets and you know talking to people in I'm using WoW as an example here, but you know, like, um, sometimes there's like new things. Like, I've noticed a lot lately, a lot of secrets are being discovered in uh, World of Warcraft. Like, there was a new pet that you could get from Karazhan, like this ghost kitten or something, a chonky cat, and you had to, um, you had to actually go and collect like lots of different food in Karazhan and lay it out in a certain way on the floor and stuff, and like. You know, discovering that stuff, obviously I'd never discover that on my own. That would be impossible. I'd never think about doing that. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to just discover it by going on Facebook or Twitter and seeing a Wowhead article pop up saying, oh, there's a new pet, here's how you get it, do this. I'd want to talk to people in game, you know, get interact with people and have them show me that's what I miss about WoW is the community and I feel this way because I'm going in blind there are going to be people in this game and they know exactly what's going on there they're going to know everything I'm go- and by going in blind I'm now forced to interact with people and ask them questions 
and you know wow's not a game that you can really mid max on your own if you're going to mid max you need to do tons of research and i think that by doing this you know i'm not a mid maxer like i tried doing classic and that failed completely i burnt myself out and um yeah it just wasn't for me so to be what's this one second sorry i'm just trying to concentrate here a bit oh, let me kick him back um and yeah i kind of sorry i'm just just want to see what's going on there oh he's running away i put my xp banner down i didn't even kill him what a waste um so yeah what was i saying sorry um yeah i'm going to be forced to interact with people and i'm going to learn stuff about you know what's the best by talking to people rather than just reading it in an article and me going and doing it and not interacting with anyone and doing it on my own you know i'm gonna raid i'm gonna do dungeons but and i think with the dungeons i should probably look at maybe the mechanics on bosses or because i don't want to be that guy who ruins people i know there's a lot of people in this game who just want to go in the dungeon get the gear and that's it but you know uh, it's not like the old days now like in classic where you can just you know go in knowing nothing and people will tell you and teach you there's uh, the community like that doesn't exist in retail anymore people expect you to know what you're doing and if you don't then a lot of people don't have time for you um and i don't want to be that guy who annoys other people for that kind of reason so you know dungeons i might make an exception for in the same with raids but um with the story and stuff and maybe you know like transmog if i see a cool pet or something or i'm i'm gonna talk to people and see if i can like you know bring back the community into the game itself for myself but i'm having a really good time like just not knowing anything about the game um at the same time I, it's kind of uh made me a bit bored on youtube because um <laughs> i watch a lot of um wow related streamers and you know youtube videos and stuff like this about wow and people who play wow and right now all of them are sort of mid-maxing and gearing out and stuff so i'm trying to avoid watching these videos because i want to keep it you know fresh for myself but oh don't say he's evading christ's sake um <laughs> but uh yeah we'll um we'll do what we can and uh see if the enjoyment stays up but right now this is the best experience i've had in a long long time playing wow on a release um and you know i think um you know as awesome as it was working for blizzard one of the big downsides was you know oh shit, sorry as a as a game master it's your job to be knowledgeable of the game and you're expected to know the new systems the mechanics the the content to some respect everything like this and without having to study this like stuff it feels so much better like you know we i remember i i, I can't and i don't want to go into too much details about you know the life of a gm and everything because that's hush hush um but you know i think it's obvious that you know game masters they're there to be literally what the name says a game master they need to be knowledgeable and know stuff and with that they have to study this stuff and um you know not having to do that for once for a expansion has been a real real like relief it's been so nice to go in fresh just not not knowing anything kind of thing it's uh 
I know I sound like a repeating record here, but it's um, it's just such a different experience for me this time around, and um, I'm pleased. I'm quite happy with it. And um, I think the game will last longer for me, to be honest, as well. That's um, that's another thing because, ooh, I'm why am I friendly? Yeah, friendly with the wild hunt. Um, you know, there's always a limited amount of things you can do in WoW at the beginning of a expansion with the latest content. I mean, um, and I think with without knowing everything, I'm gonna probably find myself being able to do a lot more as well and discover a lot more, which will keep me, you know, um, one sec, there's a chest, oh, it's up here, uh, which will keep me engaged for longer, kind of thing. So, can I get up this? No. Gosh, this is going to be another of those chests where where I um, won't know how to get it. It looks like up here though. Um, so yeah. And um, it's not just WoW that I'm trying to do this with where I'm avoiding everything. It's um, any game. Uh, what, what example can I give that maybe a recent game that I've played? Um, I know this sounds weird and a lot of you probably won't even believe me, but Halo. Um, I had never played or really known anything about Halo other than the, the freaking meme song, uh, the T-pose, like, that, oh, like, you know, the, the main sort of hymn that you hear on the, on the start menu. I've heard this, uh, in a lot of meme videos, usually with a lot of guys in a bathroom, like, posing and <laughs> random stuff like that but um, other than that I've never researched into the lore of Halo um, I've wanted to I wanted to from release but I was I've, I've never owned an Xbox in the past and um, I was always a loyal PlayStation fanboy and because of that I I thought you know one day I'll play Halo you know, if it ever comes to PlayStation, which it never did, um, but you know, it's on PC and it has been on PC for a long time. But I've always wanted to play it on console for some reason. I don't know why. It's just, just one of them things. And uh, I recently picked up, picked up a Xbox and I played it for the first time. I streamed it, or streamed a bit of it anyway, and um, it was it was good. I really enjoyed it. It was Halo Reach. It was the first one I played. Uh, I've got the Master Chief Collection on Game Pass, so I've got more Halo to play. But, you know, I went in knowing nothing about that game. I knew that it would feel dated now because it is a dated game. It came out many years ago. I remember when it first got announced, I was still playing like Counter-Strike 1.6 or something, I think, back then. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, even if it was a bit dated, there was mechanics in there that felt better than some games do nowadays. Like, the, the vehicles, they felt good. And especially, like, the there was, like, a spaceship mission where I had to defend, like, a huge, like, mothership. And, you know, there was, like, like, like Battlestar Galactica. There were, like, you know, and Mass Effect, there were, like, these ships just, like, warping in right next to you and you had to shoot them down, like... To think that game was from that long ago, like, no, it's crazy. Sorry, just reading this. Yeah, um, you know, and I went in loving that game. The, the difference was with that, that I knew Halo was a beloved franchise for a lot of people. That was obvious. And because of that, I, I went in knowing that I'll probably like it because of that. But at the same time you know I've played a lot of games where I've gone in w with a game which has high expectations and I've been disappointed because I've set my expectations way too high and I've just been disappointed example um, Skyrim 
I I know it's a fantastic game. I know it is. But the trouble is, um, one of my friends actually um, made a uh, like definition that a game can be Skyrimmed, and that basically means overhyped. It and I agree. There was just way too much hype for Skyrim and stuff. And um, oops, when um, when I eventually play it, I I was expecting too much from it. And yeah, it is a really good game, you know. But at the same time, I I don't know. I, I sort of expected more, I think, or. Or maybe people just went on about it so much. You know when someone bangs on about something so much and you're just bored of it before you even tried it? That's another problem. Um, so yeah, that, that can be Skyrimmed for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from that, I've, you know... Um, all other games that I've gone into in the past I've usually or at least since YouTube and Twitch became a thing I've always like really researched into games and um, it it has ruined a lot of them and I've found myself over years just not enjoying games as much like I'll go in with a sort of a view even before I've even touched the game and usually it can be like a lot of the time a negative view because you know people are so uh, critical about any game these days like even if they love it people are critical you know and it could just be because they're really passionate about it but at the same time like I've found a lot of people will uh, maybe jump on bandwagons a bit where people don't know anything about the game they don't play the game, they've never played the game. They just see a lot of content creators maybe saying a bad thing or not agreeing with something in a game. And they're just like, yeah, this is definitely a problem, I agree. And they they maybe don't even know what they're talking about. And I can admit that I've done that in the past, you know? I have jumped on bandwagon sometimes thinking that, you know, these guys know what they're talking about and they're right and what they say is right so I agree um, they say this game's terrible I'm not gonna play this game sort of thing but I think that that's not a healthy way to try and enjoy life I can say that because I um, I've got a, a very old-school example here um, there was a game on the PlayStation 1. It was called ESPN Extreme Games. <laughs> and it was a game where you basically chose between uh, rollerblades, skateboard, bike, luge, and I think that was it. Yeah, that was it for that one. Um, and... You basically race 25 people or 27 I can't remember I think it was 25 and you raced from start to finish uh, it was not the best graphic graphical game sort of thing it was quite limited pixelated and everything but a lot of things were back then on the PlayStation 1 um, however I remember I bought it I played it I absolutely loved it got so addicted to it it was so satisfying you could um, punch people off their like uh, off their rollerblades or you know like hit them over and um, you know if you were on the bike you could like kick people like <laughs> there was like little people on luges and you could literally just kick the people on the luges and they go flying and then they had to run back to their luge sit on it and carry on racing um, and you went through like gates and stuff and you got points and cash and you could buy like better rollerblades and better characters and stuff like that um, and yeah it was it was a really satisfying game I loved it and then I remember I, I always bought a magazine called Power Station 
and Power Station was similar to uh, like PC gamer kind of thing, but for PlayStation. So every month there was a new release and there'd be like game previews and I don't think there was demo discs on that. There was, uh, instead of demo discs, they had cheats at the back, like cheats for PlayStation 1 games. Um, and yeah, I, re I remember um, in a Power Station magazine, which I loved, I loved Power Station so much, I, I usually agreed with like all their sort of, you know, any reviews that I read in there on games. Um, but the thing is, like their reviews were quite basic as well, so they they didn't ruin the games or anything before you played them. They just gave you like the inkling of what to expect. Um, but I remember after I played Extreme Games for a long, long time, and I'd been loving that game, and I was still actively playing it. I read a review in Power Station saying that it was a disaster like the worst game on playstation one like they gave it like a, a two out of 90 or something it was like they absolutely detested it and from that moment i was just like what like these guys are insane like and it never changed my view of it I always loved that game, and I think I always will. It was just an awesome game. However, if that happened in this day and age, let's say, you know, Extreme Games came out today, you know, and I saw this review, and a lot of other people agreed with this review and they all said it was bad and a really terrible game and they pointed out all the flaws with it I would probably not even consider playing it because I I don't know I'm, maybe I'm weak that I let people decide for me if a game is good or you know what is that is you know is it that I'm weak or is it just I'm too easily influenced or something or what I don't know but all I do know is that when I don't pay attention to all these reviews and negative feedback and like criticism of games before I play them generally I will enjoy a lot of games and I think that this is you know I mean, it could be happening for Shadowlands. I haven't looked at any reviews for Shadowlands or anything. I don't know if people are liking this expansion or if they're hating it. For all I know, it could be another WAD situation. There could be, like, you know, servers down and, like, people's character locked and, like, nothing to do in the game. People in garrisons. Maybe when I hit max level, there will be a garrison again. Maybe they're going to try Garrison 2.0 or 3, because I think... Garrison 2.0 was like the Legion artifact zones, wasn't it? For each uh, each class had their own zone, but that was actually decent. Um, but yeah, with uh, with this, who knows? I don't know what to expect, but um, you know, I'm really liking it. And uh, yeah, that's that's sort of what I want to make a video on. I've sort of been rambling about it for the last like almost 40 minutes now, but. I think you you all get the idea, and um, I'd be interested. Like, if anyone does watch this video, just leave a comment and tell me. Like, you know, do you get influenced by reviews and like stuff like that before you've played a game or anything? Or maybe do you follow any influencers who they who you like you respect and you agree with and sometimes if they don't like a game you also don't like that game it's like it's like you know when you're at school for example like this is a, a good uh, comparison I think you're at school you've got a friend who is into let's say skateboarding yeah you're not into skateboarding you've never skateboarded but you've seen him skateboarding and you know that he's got a lot of friends who really think oh he's you know he's cool he's he skateboards and he hangs out with like loads of people who skateboard and 
you want to be part of this you want people to be impressed with you that you can skateboard and everything like that um you want to be with this like in crowd kind of thing so you decide to take up skateboarding and you find that you're not good at skateboarding or you don't enjoy skateboarding but you still do it because your friend does it and your friend really likes it and he's popular for it and everything and you know it can be the same with influences and games like you know oh like this this guy that I follow on Twitch said that he doesn't like this game so I don't like it or you know this influence is playing this game so it must be good so I'll play it but and then you play it and you don't like it I think a good example of this was uh, maybe COD for a lot of people you know uh, Warzone in my opinion was like an awesome game I loved it I played it for a long time but all my friends or most of my friends they didn't like it they didn't want to play it with me they thought it was a waste of money and do I blame them no way I think you know I was impressed that you know despite all the success that Warzone was getting they didn't touch it they weren't influenced and this is why I think I'm just weak-minded in this respect that I, I let things influence me way too easily and yeah I don't know it just feels it feels like I've got my own opinions back in my own mind a bit with uh, with this you know I just feel like I'm in control of if I enjoy something now and yeah it sounds so weird like I, I can imagine a lot of you probably don't even have this problem you're just listening to this like what is this guy on about he is off his rocker he is out of his mind he is just weak source but you know maybe so maybe maybe it's just me maybe I could be the only one who thinks like this but I like to think maybe there's other people out there who are not enjoying gaming or maybe even movies as well it can link to that that as well um and maybe they just need you know someone to tell them just stop stop listening to other people just stop following these people and just take back your mind take back your opinions like control it like you make the decisions um you know another comparison real quick um instagram models and uh like celebs kind of thing especially in fitness you know i when i was in uh blizzard like um they opened a gym uh uh like an on-site gym uh i joined i got really big into fitness i was loving it uh, I started following a load of like you know fitness people on Instagram and they were telling me you know like, oh you need to have like this many carbs a day you need to watch your intake of calories and do this and you know obviously a lot of them were correct but then there's people and influencers out there who are trying to sell you products that you know they say are amazing and that they're like they're so good and then you try them and you don't see any sort of like crazy results or anything um bcaa is a big big one for that like honestly i think i still think to this day that bcaa is an absolute bullshit i think you can buy much better products than bcaa and get like equal or better results like um yeah i don't know i think you know for the stuff you get with BCA, I think you can get in a lot of other products um, and even food and stuff like that. Oh, saw shape. Interesting. Oops. Oh, there we go. I'm a fox. I don't really need this. I've got travel form already. This is pointless, but okay. And what does this do? 
flicker teleport. Oh, okay. So I've got a teleport. So it's so it's a bit faster, maybe. Let's have a look. This still feels faster. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Um, it's not really needed as a druid, though. Okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, you follow these like influencers and celebs, and, you know, people with six packs and stuff, and a lot of the time you will feel like you have to do exactly what they're doing if they post like their workout you're like okay i need to do this workout so i can look like them so i can be like them and stuff and you know if if they say oh like you know this kind of food is really bad for you then you feel bad that you're eating that food if you eat it and stuff and uh, i don't know it's it, it's the same kind of thing if you get what I'm saying like some people are influencers and they will influence you I mean you know it's even um do I have to talk to this guy I'm not really interested in who this bear is um but yeah you know people are called influencers for a reason and probably I am their target influence you know I am the person who they want to influence it's why companies are paying these influencers to play their games you know look at Ninja you know he got paid uh, when Warzone came out you know I think he would have been quite happy still playing Fortnite but you know Activision paid him god knows how much to basically play their game for what was it like a week or something and you know obviously all his followers started playing it and they started liking it and stuff and um you know he he obviously stopped playing um but that's it some people are very influential these days and um some people are very easily influenced and that's the trouble so yeah um, yeah, not, not much more to say on it really, it's just like, I just, I don't know, I, I want people to just try, you know, try not to be influenced, like, try to influence yourself, kind of thing, what is this frog, he's got a quest, and am I recovered? Have I got something? Have I got a quest item? I haven't got anything to recover anima from the frog. Do I have to like... Oh, maybe I have to be a fox to talk to him. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um... So yeah, that's that's kind of what I want a video on. Obviously, I wouldn't ramble as much as that, but you know, there's a few things in there that I'd um, that I'd uh, touch on. I think I'd include the like the stuff about you know working for Blizzard and having to learn all this stuff, and then being a player again and not having to learn it and experiencing it for the first time oh i want to watch this i don't know if i've seen this one. Oh, i have i saw this this is the uh sock that was a good video i think this was my favorite one sad as well very sad Oh gosh, sorry, <laughs> just did it again. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, make games great again. Let's let's say that. I don't know that um, what title or two. Don't be influenced. Influence the power or make games great again. Take your opinion back. I don't know. We'll we'll think of a cool name for it, but. It'll probably be a long time to be honest. Like my video editing skills are very 
limited and I follow a lot of tutorials on the spot so um, yeah I wouldn't expect any time soon it will be like a gradual gradual video you know I want to make it look decent not just me sitting in front of a camera or talking on a video like this but to have like you know nice sort of you know background pictures and like transitions and everything like that but um we'll see we shall see um but yeah but so far like you know this this like expansion is awesome i'm loving it and like i really like these cool trees as well it's awesome awesome source okay so what are we doing here the forest provides keep your teeth sharp keep your teeth sharp but um yeah on the, on the same subject again I'm I'm trying to keep this promise to myself like this like from now on that I'll I'll stop like looking at these kind of like previews for games and stuff like if I if I see a game that I think I'm interested in I'm just going to go ahead and buy it and make my own decision cuz um you know uh, another example actually of where I've liked a game that was um i think was the worst rated game on metacritic warcraft 3 reforged it was a disaster right it was absolutely terrible that's what most of the people on the internet thought i quite enjoyed it i didn't see any problems with it like you know uh there was I remember watching so many videos of these people with problems with it and I was just sat there like I don't know what the problem is I'm having a good time you know I want I, I, I expected more from it I think like you know there were problems with it for sure there was uh, you know the expat um, the animations that we were promised like that was a big problem that was disappointment but overall I like the game I was having fun playing it. I, I'm a huge Warcraft 3 fan. I play custom maps like a huge chunk of my life used to be um, playing WoW. And if I wasn't playing WoW, I was playing Warcraft 3 custom maps. And if I wasn't playing that, I was playing Counter Strike 1.6. But it was a huge part of my life. And to be able to experience Warcraft 3 again in any new kind of form. Like, even if they just released it again now with, I don't know, some minor improvements, I'd probably still buy it again. And uh, I, I'm the problem. That's, this is why Blizzard and companies can get away with this kind of shit, because I'm the kind of person who will pay that money to play these sort of re-releases of these kind of games, even if they're half -assed. Um And, you know, people were getting refunds on it. Warcraft 3 refunded, as I said, but... I was happy with it. I I was enjoying it. I was playing custom maps. I was like loving the new skins and textures and stuff. And um, you know, I think a lot of people probably would have um, also enjoyed playing that game if they had just gone in, and if the backlash wasn't so harsh on the internet. Because I think a lot of people just rip the game off completely without even trying it. I think a lot of people probably wouldn't have even been disappointed, especially if it was their first time playing uh, Warcraft 3, you know, or if you didn't even know about these like animations that were changed kind of thing, because um, they were like really nerfed, like the animations in the BlizzCon videos looked freaking amazing, like, you know, like proper m newly done movies and stuff, but in the game they were just like really th there was no animation it was just default character models standing and like you doing their like idle animation kind of thing it was pathetic but that's uh that's the point i'm making you know if if you went in not expecting anything 
you wouldn't have been disappointed. The only reason so many people were disappointed is because they probably, you know, they saw these BlizzCon videos and um, they saw all these, like, you know, reviews and uh, maybe the, the data mining that was coming out. Uh, I remember Wowhead even data mined, like, almost all the models and everything. And, you know, if that hadn't have happened, maybe people would have just picked it up and played it and liked it. And if they hadn't have gone on Metacritic or they hadn't have seen all these articles about people refunding it, maybe they wouldn't have refunded it. I think people are just too easily influenced sometimes, me especially. So yeah, I've I've sort of on um on my Facebook and uh, Twitter I've tried uh, I still follow the pages, but I've I've muted them so I don't see their updates because um i mean no offense to wowhead because let's face it wowhead's job is to data mine and uh share secrets and spoilers and news anything with warcraft but at the same time that's exactly what i'm trying to avoid so i have muted them and how the hell do i get these things up here i'm looking at these things in the sky can i just no can't do it while moving that's uh weird um, but yeah, so we'll see, you know, if the video even helps like a couple of people, like, I'll be happy. Um, try to think if there's been any other games that I've recently started playing that I'm sort of not, not, uh, researched into the good, um, Hmm. Uh, on Xbox, uh, I started playing. Uh, Tell me why it's called. Uh, I streamed the first bit of that, and uh, I actually really like it. I think it's um, it's like a fresh take on a adventure game. There hasn't been a adventure game for a long time, as far as I know. Like the last big one I can think of is, um, gosh, what was it called? Oh my gosh, it was about the girl who could, like, see things. Oh god, I want to say Stranger Things, but it's not Stranger Things. It's like... Fudge, what was it called? Ah, oh, Life? No? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to gonna kick myself when I read the name. Also, what is going on with these things up in the sky? How do I get... Oh, look, there's a freaking thing ramp there um so yeah uh i will be uh carrying on with that for sure and this is another game where i have no idea what the reviews are on that game i don't know if it's good i've already got a feeling i know what one of the reviews will be uh i reckon it will have a half half audience there will be half who love the game but I remember during my playthrough, I heard that one of the characters said that they went to a trans like meetup uh, thing. So obviously, that character is trans, and I immediately know there will be a huge chunk of people who are like, they're forcing trans into the game. Like we don't need this in the game. And for that reason, they'll boycott it. They'll give it bad reviews and everything. Same happened with The Last of Us 2. It's natural. People do that. But, again, there are people who are influenced by this. And they will just follow that sweet... Uh, like, yeah. They will... They'll follow, follow suit, you know? They'll just... They'll... They won't even give it a go. And so far... Like, I'm not going to spoil that game at all, but I think the game has potential to be good. Like I've I've just unlocked like one of the main kind of features, let's say, about the game, and it's an interesting one. And the the whole story seems like it can be interesting. Maybe like some plot twists here and there and stuff. And generally, it's a nice looking adventure game. So I'm going to carry on playing it. 
after I've played it, that's when I'll look at the reviews and the, the feedback and I want to see if I'm correct with this kind of uh, assumption on the division between the two the two kind of groups that... What is this thing? Do I have to be in my... Oh gosh, war form? Fairy dust makes you lighter. Ah, oh, allowing you to fly. Oh my god, I'm a... Why am I such a plonker? It's because I'm chatting all the time. I'm not actually paying attention to what I'm meant to be doing here. So this is why I couldn't get the freaking things because I need to use that dust to fly. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to be right about that. Uh, I did read reviews on The Last of Us 2. Reason being is that I am not going to be playing that because because I do not have a PlayStation anymore. Um, I got rid of my PlayStation when I... I didn't play the PlayStation much uh, recently. I, I played it a lot in the past, but um, it was just sitting there gathering dust. So uh, I got rid of it and um, I invested in an Xbox instead because uh, it's just something that I've wanted to give a go for a long time. And uh, I thought... You know, if I'm going to invest in the Xbox, I might as well get a Series X and get, you know, be next-gen proof kind of thing. Um, so I won't be playing The Last of Us 2, but um, I am actually going to watch playthroughs and stuff, even though I have seen the feedback, and it's very mixed. A lot of, even a lot of the influencers who are usually extremely positive about everything, uh, even they said they were upset by some of the decisions in it and um i think when you upset neutral streamers and neutral influencers that can be really negative for your game definitely like because i don't know it's just it's hard to explain but you know you know there's some people there's some influencers who are you you know them to be critical and you know them to be harsh and you know and it's normal when it's the norm for them but when you see like people who are very neutral and usually very positive about games suddenly turn on a game and give it like shocking reviews that's when you know you're in trouble and that's when you know a lot of people will be influenced in that way so yeah it's um we live in interesting times for sure like a lot different like when i was young games were so simple you bought a game based on maybe even the front cover of the box sometimes i remember i saw game boxes i was like oh that's a cool box like and then you look at the back of the box and you look at the pictures and you're like oh this could be good and then you just buy it you go home you play it most of the time you love it it was very rare that i ever bought a game that i didn't like i i have to say i think i liked 90 percent of the games that i bought as a kid um, and some of them, you know, were given terrible reviews. Um, but I still liked them. And that's the important thing, right? So, uh, hang on, because I need to start flying. How do I... Can I fly? Fairy dust makes you lighter. Why can't I use it? How do you... Ah, you double tap. It's like double jump. Jesus Christ. All these mechanics. This isn't the World of Warcraft I know. Um, so what do I need? Something from here? But yeah, I remember I, I liked so many bad games. There was a football game called um, International Superstar Soccer Pro. And back then everyone was playing... Uh, I got it quite late as well, so everyone was playing Adidas Power Soccer on PlayStation and um, even FIFA. And uh, reviews for this game were terrible. People hated it. Me? I freaking loved that game. I thought it was like so satisfying. It was just so arcadey. 
and that was a good thing because there were so many games back then and they were trying to be like the authentic football experience like you know if if you wanted the authentic FIFA experience you had to play FIFA but if you just wanted like a kind of an arcadey feeling like you know not too realistic just just fun to play you played international superstar soccer pro uh trouble is i think i was probably the only person i knew who thought this apart from my two friends who i forced them to play it and they also loved it but every other review i ever read on any websites or any um any magazines they said you you will waste your money if you buy this game. There are so many better football games. And I played FIFA. I played Adidas Power Soccer. Were they good? Yes. Were they my favourite? No. Far from it. I loved International Superstar Soccer Pro. And the same with Extreme Games, you know. To be fair, there wasn't many games like Extreme Games. So there wasn't actually any alternatives. But that was the funny thing. It got such a low score that um, people just, they didn't even care that there wasn't any alternatives. They were just like, this game's so bad, just don't play it. Like, that they didn't have a backup, like, oh, go and play this game instead. It was just like, this game is bad, do not play it. And that was it. So, yeah. Um... I'm trying to think of like other old, maybe unpopular opinion games that uh, I liked. Uh, what else was there? There was, there was, there was a few back then that were, again, what is this? Why can't I click? Why can't I click there? But I can click here. So weird. Um, there was one called. Uh, oh, that's a good one. A really unpopular gem of a game. It, it, you're going to laugh when you hear the name probably it's called Wargasm <laughs> and you think okay this game is going to be shit because of the name alone uh, it's what I thought as well but again played it loved it it had the best freaking soundtrack ever it was like orchestral kind of powerful music and oh my god Imagine driving a freaking tank, having Carl Orff like just blasting out his powerful orchestra music. Like, hang on, let me let me get one of the songs real quick. We won't get um get flagged, I don't think, if I just play a tiny bit, just so you know which uh, which song it is. One second. Oh God, Chrome isn't responding. I should not have alt tabbed. Um, oh, here we go. YouTube. One second. Oh, God. Let's just get safe here. Carl Orf or Fortuna. This is it. So, you'll know this. I'll skip in. You know? That's probably all, all I can play, otherwise we'll get flagged. But, um, yeah, imagine that music while you're driving a freaking tank. And all all that game is that was just you in a tank in, like, a desert or on, like, green hills. And there were other tanks coming over the horizon quite far apart. Um, you had a radar and all you had to do was shoot the other tanks. You had a few different, um, like, um, uh, guns, like you could switch between like your main ca cannon and then like, uh, some, you know, armor piercing rounds and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing complicated. Um, and honestly, I loved it. It was so simple, but it was so good so satisfying like the satisfaction of the music alone and driving a tank and blasting other tanks up it just felt so good when you got that perfect long range hit while that music's playing and oh it was so good were the reviews good for the game no 
freaking terrible. Not hardly any people freaking knew the game existed. I mention it now, like you know, when I worked at Blizzard. Oh my God, what have I done? Oh, oh, that was good. Um, when I worked at Blizzard, obviously, you know, people at Blizzard and a lot of gaming companies are sheer nerds. They know everything about games. I mentioned this game to a lot of people. None of them had ever heard of it. They thought I was joking. I had to actually prove it was real by actually going, um, when I went home, uh, back to England, I, I still have the CD in England and, uh, the, the, the dual case for it. Uh, I had to take a picture of it because no one would believe me. And honestly, I don't blame them with a name like that. If you tried calling a game like that these days, no way people would believe you. Um, can I fly again? I can't. I've lost it. How do I get out this freaking tree? Okay, this zone is starting to... Oh, I've got to go over there. Freaking hell. I kind of regret what I said about this zone. I said it was like my favourite zone so far, but there seems to be a lot of um, like trees to walk up, and I'm not a fan of that. What's happening here? Uh, let's, let's pull this. Oh, what's going to pop out? It's a big plant. Okay. But yeah, so this this stream has been very influence focused and uh, I apologise for that if that wasn't what you were in the mood for but it's just something that I wanted to chat about a bit I guess and um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll try and stop talking about it now because it has literally been an hour since I've been talking about this. So uh, let's move on to something else. Ooh, an epic upgrade. Polearm. Oh, of course, it's not. It's uh, not for me. It's uh, not for me. It looks kind of cool, though, to be fair. I like it. Nice model. Um, But yeah, I'm. I am liking the models for this expansion as well to be honest um it's actually really quite uh quite nice so far there's like the the armor seems like uh, decently designed in a way that um you know it matches quite well you can't see obviously because i'm in mean, that form but um you know, I've been picking up loads of different armor pieces and replacing them, and um, they all sort of match together quite nicely. So, um, I think a lot of um, future transmog competitions will be quite interesting because a lot of stuff is like blendable together now. So, um, a lot more options for a lot of people. So, that's good. I can't be asked to fight these, so we're going to sneak past them. Can I sprint? I can. Nice. me. Okay. Gosh damn it. I thought it was hostile. Oh, what's this? Resist control. Oh, I just keep tapping this, I guess. Oh, end it. I'm not going to have to kill her, am I? She was like, really nice if it's that character I was thinking of. I haven't been paying much attention. I need to start paying a bit more attention this thing, I think. Cool, that's... Uh, pretty. It's like fireworks. Why isn't she dying? Oh, there we go. Oh, I actually had to kill her. Fuck. Jesus. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> not the most appropriate time to laugh like that, but okay. I wonder if I can use the fox in midair. No, I can't. Oh, yeah, I can. It just teleports me down to the ground. Interesting. Fair enough. Oh, it's got a two minute cooldown, so you can use the blink, like, quite a lot when you're actually in the form, but if the, you remove the form, it's two minutes before you can go back into it. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Where to? Uh, I think I should carry on with like the main quest a bit. I'll do maybe. Yeah, we'll just go and hand this quest in, and we'll see what it looks like, and um. Then we'll decide if we want to carry on. I'm getting a bit tired though. I did say this will just be for an hour. So, um, yeah, let me just, uh, I'm going to close up um, Chrome because I've had it open all day with a million tabs open and it's uh, getting a bit intensive with streaming as well. My computer isn't the, the best spec thing in the world. So, yeah, I have to you know, save my, my, uh, bandwidth and whatnot. Gosh, I'm terrible at thinking of words, like, on the spot. I'm, uh, I'm one of these people who always has to, like, you know, if ever they're going to do public speaking, I have to write everything down beforehand, like, almost have a script ready, or loads of notes and stuff, but... When someone asks me for like, you know, oh, what does this word mean? Like, I go blank. Even though I know what it means, like, I just, uh, I won't know how to explain it or I'll just, like, forget the <laughs> the definition or even what the word means and stuff is terrible. Um, something wrong with me. I think I just get too, too under pressure sometimes when people ask me questions. But, um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to the way. Oh, there's a lot of people kill here. Let's uh, round some people up, and then AOE them down. Oh God! Um, shit, shit, shit! I didn't expect them to be that strong. To be fair. easy um, but yeah so if, if I ever stop talking and suddenly like go blank I that's me trying to think of the right word to say um, so yeah Gosh, I'm getting tired again now. What is that? Oh, there's an elite there, but I need to kill the elites as well, apparently, so... Maybe this mage can help a bit? There we go. Fighting for aggro. It's all good. Whoa, where did all these come from?
they're spawning quite fast, maybe because there's like a lot of uh, people AOEing. I want to stay in range of the guild standard, so get that extra XP as well. I'm surprised more people haven't been doing um, like guild standard stacking and just AOEing because there's it seems like I've been to a lot of zones where there's like decent ways to just AOE a lot of things down. Uh, maybe Blizzard like uh, remove that. Oh god! Oh god! But like here for example, like obviously if you don't get hit like me, oh that's why I pulled an elite as well. I wondered why I was getting damaged so much. Do -do 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 -do. Punch her in the face, see you later. Ooh, a moon right to the head. That would hurt. No? What do you reckon? Moon to the head? How do you reckon that would feel? Feels good, man. Feels good. Oh, Jesus, Moobot, you scared me. Where have you been? My poor chat has been unmonitored without you. How will I cope? But seriously, Moobot. Sort it out, yeah? I'm going to head up here because in all the other locations I've had to head up and it's annoyed me. Gosh, why do I have to kill so many elite? Or I don't think I do, I think they just drop the same items. So yeah, we probably don't. Oh god. Let's drop one of these, push them back this here, do a bit of AOE, single target, maybe a moon to the head, moon to the head, moon to the head, Ooh, they do a lot of damage, like they chunk it, like it's that, whatever that uh, spell is that I'm getting hit by there, it's a chunky spell that is, what do you ask? What do you ask? No, it won't be. I won't let that happen. Oh, Jesus, who's this? enjoying Moonkin a lot, like, it's obviously not as easy as Hunter because I was playing BM Hunter and that was actually going to be my plan is to play BM Hunter, but um, I'm uh, I'm happy with Moonkin, it's, uh, it's actually quite fun, you know, BM Hunter was just so easy though, I'll give it that, it was just like, literally send your pet in, um, it could be an elite, it could be anything, just men pet it and if if it gets too low then you use your big, uh, is it meditation cooldown or whatever it was called, sorted, that, that was all you needed to do, do we need to kill him for God, plundered, maybe, doesn't show that I need to kill him but there's a circle there so maybe I do, Pew, pew, pew. That spell is so freaking awesome. The damage is just absolutely insane. Um, oh, I need to go under it. There we go. Dark purpose 
say. Just need to pick up these little pouches. Oh, there's another hidden there. Almost done. Is there one there? Nope. Is that one? There. Oh, come on. One more. but I can't get it. Ah, there's some. Work complete. Oh, now I've got to go kill that guy. Of course. Will they st are they still with me? That's good. Oh. It's, um, it is that guy that I killed a minute ago, if you have to ask. Saved by a fairy. Interesting. Yeah, sure, I'm ready. Let's rain some fairy magic. Ooh, one shot, one shot kill. Sparkle them up, oh my god. <laughs> They're not holding back the fairiness, are they? definitely think that that knight, um, what was it, fairy dragon transmog that Blizzard added was blatantly meant to be from this zone for like, you know, a reputa reputation reward or like a secret, like unlock or something, like, I don't know, I think they just got a bit greedy and shoved it on the store instead for some reason. Because this seems like the perfect zone to have that as like some sort of secret unlock or something though. I mean, I am literally flying around as a fairy right now. And, you know, fae dragon or fairy dragon? Like, 
do I really need to explain the link here? Like, come on. Okay, and we're back home with the big bear. The big blue beautiful bear. And we've got a new cloak, which means we also will need... What does... What's the cloak enchant again? Oh no, there isn't. Is there a cloak enchant now? Because the boots... The belt is the um, nitro boots, so the cloak is the glider. Is that right? Where's the glider? Goblin glider? Uh, is that cloak? Yeah, cloak. Okay, so we need to put that in the new cloak. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Anima explosion. Okay. Um, to be honest though guys, like it's uh it's half past one. Uh I've ranted about ranting for god knows how long, so um I'm gonna call it a night here and uh head to bed. Um and we'll carry on tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow will be max level by the time I get streaming, but we'll see. So thank you very much for watching guys and um yeah, I'll uh, catch you all later. Peace.